Yo. Yo. Chris, what's good, bro? What up? I'm liking the view, yo. Looking nice out here. You like you guys like Dallas, Texas? I mean, I like the <laughs> city. I don't like the teams, which we'll get into later. But, um, yo, we back. March 2nd, bro. The whole year later, we're still in this quarantine, and we're here doing the Radical Souls podcast, guys. Who would have thought? Sir, yes, sir. What? Wow, it really had... had it's March, guys. Remember March last year? I was talking about... Yeah, we may shut down shit. We may not. It might be just two weeks of shutdown and everything goes back to normal. Yeah, yo, you, you remember off. that? And they were like, oh, yeah, you're just going to have a week off from spring break and let everything go back to normal, and then you're going to go back to school. And I ended up Never graduating saw not in school, except going there like once every two weeks. Yeah. But, hey, I ain't complaining. It was a pretty uh, easy two semesters, so I'll take it. <laughs> but if you I haven't seen any episodes in the past this is the radical soul podcast i'm daniel i'm chris i'm ethan and if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button right now stop the video hit the subscribe button so Yo, it's dope oh. content it's dope content you know what I'm Support, support local businesses. Uh, but yo, you lucky I can't spaz, I can't spaz out today. I'm in the office. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get into this, yo. Let's let's talk about a big thing that happened overnight, bro. The Nike VP resigned. We need to break that down. We need to get into that topic because it's it's a crazy story, and I want to get your guys' takes on what happened out here. Um. Yeah, we're gonna break, don't worry, Chris. We're gonna break this down. Don't worry, don't worry. You gonna get your pieces. Um, we're gonna talk to Knicks. Yo, Knicks are back. We in fourth place. I want to get Ethan's take because you know he's a Thunder fan. Ethan, you gonna be talking your Thunder today. We got an upcoming game with the Dallas Mavericks, so we we gonna talk about a certain player from Chris's city that we got some problems with. That you know, apparently it ain't only us that got problems with him now. Oladipo. Yeah. He, he had a chance of a contract extension. Did he say yes? Did he say no? We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit and why he did or did not say it. And, yo, NFL. We got to talk some NFL news. It's been a really, really long offseason of just speculation. Free agency starts soon, and J.J. Watt already announced something huge. And you got Dak Prescott, another dude from Chris's favorite city in the world and all his favorite teams in the world now that... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to break that down a little bit. So let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yo. And Herbert. Yo, learn the name. Yo, Shorty was the VP of Nike and the GM of the North American region. Yo, I'm talking the North American continent, dog. Like Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. Yo. So for, for those that don't know, let's give a quick headline. Nike VP resigns after the report of her son's lucrative sneaker resale business. That's kind of funny. We're in the sneaker resale business. Any uh, moms or dads work for Nike? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Mine sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So apparently, Homie had a, a a business credit card under her name that they linked back to her. He was using her discount and her access, bro. There's a picture of him with like a hundred pair of off white fives that came out last year during All Star break, bro. I got one and I felt like Jesus himself. I was like, yo, I'm the same God. Like, there, there's no judging this. Yo, Homie was out here with a hundred pairs that he got on discount. And he's there's no denying it. Like he has, they have everything there. Can we talk about how this fucking idiot got caught? Because you know they, this is only one of probably many. He he got caught because he went out there and said something. Yeah, he talked to Bloomberg Weekly. They were like, "Yo, let's do a let's do an interview on this kid." You know, he's got an amazing sneaker business. He's doing this thing. He's getting all this news about pairs and the amount of supply and demand there is for these pairs. And people are like, yo, this kid is a genius, yo. Like, how, I don't know how he's getting this stuff, but, yo, the way he's putting it together must be crazy. Turns out he wasn't really doing much. He probably just opened his mom's laptop and looked at some stuff at the end of it all. Yeah. So, like, to get to quote you from the Bloomberg article, it says, Bloomberg described a transaction in which Herbert 
and his team used bots of overwhelming Yeezy supply designs and they purchased one per customer. So he, on top of that, he was using bots. He says he racked up in just one purchase on one day, 132,000 in purchases, which quickly flipped the next day for a $20,000 profit in one day off one pair of sneaker releases. So that's how much access he was getting. That shit is just like as a reseller, doesn't that, I still like that still sickens me. Just cause Bro, maybe I can. Like, let's talk about this, right? Cause you know, we, we know where me and Ethan's background came from originally. Yo, I used to buy gifts for people. And I used to be paranoid as hell. Like, yo, what did they ask me? Like, why are you buying a size six? And like, I'm going to be like, yo, like, it, it was my sister. Like, I, I swear. Like, I pro-. like, yo, I used to get paranoid. This dude was really sitting here with his mom, VP of Nike, the GM of the North American continent. And he was out here buying hundreds of thousands of dollars of sneakers with discount and access from her account. <laughs> And That's using crazy. bots in other places. What are you doing? Yo, all you have to do is go to school for four years. Maybe not even go to school because his mom's a VP. There, there was definitely a way in some way. But if you really wanted to go the safe route, you go to school for four years. She gets you in. You're in Nike corporate. You can do whatever you want at that point when it comes to sneaker releases. You get your own pairs. You're happy. You have sneakers that nobody else has. You got player editions. You got all these things. And yet, that still wasn't enough. Nope. Nope. Bruh. It says he reportedly paid more than 200000 for about 2,000 pairs. And he would just pop in with his mom yeah. to Foot Lockers and Champs. Yep. Yo, his mother had that much free time? Bro. Yo, like, what? Me, me and Ethan know, the first thing they tell you the minute you step foot, do not use your discount for reselling. Do not use anything you get here for reselling. Yo, that was a separate thing. I was like, yo, I'm not risking my job for reselling. That's not worth it. I'll get it from the Nike app and I'll keep it moving. Yo, this dude was out here going to every store. Like, yo, the fact that Nike is trying to combat resellers too and the fact that he's really going to go with his mom into these stores, like. Yeah. Bro, it says he's he's racked up more than 600000 in sales, like sales in a month. Yo. Yo, the, exa- the example they're going to set out of this lady is going to be crazy. Crazy. And if you look into this lady, I looked the, I looked into her. Like, I went into her uh, LinkedIn. And for those that don't know what LinkedIn is, it's like a social media for professionals, quote, unquote. So you go in there, look for jobs. Like, you know, it's like Facebook, but for, like, you know, super old people like myself. <laughs> <laughs> so she's the VP GM North America, but she's been was 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 it was she's she, okay was she's been with Nike since ninety five and she started oh. off as just a sales rep. She was there for in some years. in Con, in Kentucky, Louisiana, not Kentucky like the Kentucky that we all know of, like some bumfuck place in Louisiana. All right, and uh, from there she went to be just a sales manager, worked her way up to end up being a director, then. She kept going, bro. She's literally climbed. Like, if you could look up to any woman, quote unquote, like she broke the ceiling. She's a VP, like from salesperson to VP of Most like of North ass, America. Yo, like the typical, you're a sales <clears throat> associate. You move up slowly. Time will time will do you justice. That that typical story. Yeah, and and her shit face, son. If we can get a picture of him where like he did there's a picture where he just blurs his eyes and you can just see the structure of his face and you can see him because that's another thing too on all his instagram posts he blurs his face he's a fucking idiot not a good person (laughs) um (laughs) so there's a picture of him with just his eyes blurred and you could just see him and he just looks like the type of person that calls his mom a bitch like it's just he looks like just a shitty fucking person i'm sorry and I hope he sees this. So, bro. okay. Oh my god! Like, how, like you're set for life, bro. You get whatever you want from Nike. Literally, you get to maybe meet a Literally. few players along the way. You get some PEs. You get it signed by <laughs> Kevin Durant himself. Put it in a case. He could have just like went to school. Like, your mom's any, paying any for school, your school, any school right? Anything. Any school on top of that. Any school. You and want go to- for go for free. Like, 
what are you losing out on, bud? I don't know. So how many, like, now that you look back and you see all those posts of these guys with, like, you know, hundreds of shoes in a release, what do you think now? They got, like, they, they know gotta him. have some sort They know him. Bro, it, it, it's deep. The way that she resigned so fast is because they didn't want to look people looking deeper into this any at all. Like, the longer she stayed, the more they were going to look into it. And that's people are still going to look into it now. Because, like I said, the thing that's weird to me is he's 19 right now. The off-white fives that he took a picture with were the black ones that came out last All-Star game last year. So the kid had to be 18 at this time. How in the hell does he have a warehouse? You're 18 years old. What 18-year-old, if you're, uh, like, somebody selling these industrial businesses, what 18-year-old you know that you're going to say, yeah, I'll give, you, I'll give you a warehouse? None. None. If you hear, oh, None. yeah, my mom's a VP of Nike, <clears throat> yeah, you think you're going to give it to him at that point? No, it's funny. It's funny because I was actually like side thing. I was looking into buying like a, this is going to sound ridiculous. It was just a, a, an idea that pops into your head and you just start looking for it. So I was looking into buying like laundry mats and like stupid businesses like that, like car washes yeah. that run themselves. So I was like, you know what? Let me look. So I started looking and you know, you got to have like five to 10 years of like records of you having money in the bank, like all these pre-checks that they check. So there's no way this kid got, you know, a whole warehouse that he bought for himself by himself. No way. And especially at 18, like he had to. Like, it, it, it's definitely, it's definitely going to raise something. And like I said, they're going to set an example out of her and they're going to look deep into this. And this, this bro, might get ugly for the reselling market. I was literally going to say this shit might get ugly for her. Oh no, it's a wrap for her. It's, it's, all, she's, yo, she technically stole from the company. Like, that's one of the yeah. things they warn everybody in Chance, Foot Locker, <laughs> Nike, all these stores. They tell you straight up, like, yo, if you get caught reselling, you're stealing from the company. Like, that that right there. Pretty much. That's damn near embezzlement. Like, you taking – because, number one, you, you, you're you probably getting these shoes at damn near nothing because I'm yeah, sure the VP – Their discount is crazy. Their discount is wild. Yeah. Like, imagine the VP of whatever the fuck she is. She literally runs – North American sales. So she probably gets those shoes for nothing. Like at cost, maybe. So that's it's just ridiculous. You couldn't get into the car business or something, you know, something that has nothing to do with, you know what your mom works with, you just want to spit in your mom's face and make her lose her job. Like, you know. Pretty much. Not even her job, maybe her career, because I don't know. Any any sneaker company now is going to look at that and be like, no. Oh, 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 oh. She's going to have to take those set of skills and go somewhere else with that. She's going to have to like, try to rejuvenize, like, Payless or something. I don't know. Even then, Payless might be like, yo, you're going to take our shit for free and sell it. Like, what? at that point, like, we don't want you. <laughs> yeah, no. So, I mean, I'm interested to see what's going to what's gonna span out these next couple weeks, because they got to, Nike's got to do something. They can't just fire her and let it slide, like, she, but they didn't even fire her. She dipped herself. Yeah. Well, she probably dipped before they had the even chance to fire her. She probably saw her idiot son on the TV and was like, you know yo, what? He started, he started texting him like, don't use my mom's name. Don't use my mom's name. I'm like, yo, you are an idiot. You really are an idiot. Wow. And if you know, what kind of person doesn't have common sense to say, yo, I'm using my mom's discount, number one. Number two, my mom's a prominent person at this company. Number three, like, there's people out here fighting for one pair of shoes. I have hundreds at once. Why would I go out there and say anything? Why like, are you taking pictures with them on social media? So on top of that, like, yeah, I don't know. You're fucking up your own money, bud. So hey, <laughs> let it happen to you. Ethan, any, any takes from you? Honestly, it was just funny as hell just watching you guys just talk about it. Um, I mean, we all resell, but, like, that backdoor-ish, like, that's that's just unacceptable, especially coming from Nike itself. Like, you know how many L's we took from sneakers to get one pair? And he probably took half of the stock easily just off those shoes. So, disappointing. So, question: Did you guys see the picture of him with the Dior's? How many pairs he had? It's funny because you were talk, yeah. you were talking about that the other day. You're like, oh, you know, I wonder what happens to like all the pairs because they're they're numbered, bro. If you go on, there's a picture out there of him with a bunch of Dior's, bro. At least, let's see. I'm gonna just look it up because 
it, it, that, I saw that picture and it pissed me off. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take a guess at least a hundred. At least a hundred, bro. And imagine how many were released. Oh, nice! They found six pairs of Nike mags in storage unit last year. Wow! This is the this is that kid that found a, supposedly six pairs in a, in a storage unit. Oh, is it? Yeah. You remember that story that somebody bought a storage unit and they somehow found six pairs in a storage unit of Air Mags? Everybody's yeah. like, hmm. Yeah, you ain't find these. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my God. Stop fucking lying. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I, I can't find the picture, but yeah. He's got like at least more than like 50 pairs of Dior's. Bro. So... Easy money. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's let's move on to the next topic before we get a little pissed here. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about something that bring us more, more cheering and more joyfulness. Chris, yo, the Knicks are in fourth place, dog. We have not been able to say something like that since Bello was on the Knicks, rocking number seven. It was like 2012, 2013. I was like 15 years old. I'm a whole grown-ass man at 22 now with a beard. Yo, I never thought I'd see good, good Knicks basketball, I'm not going to lie, like ever in my life. Like, cause we, we've never seen it. I mean, I've been a Knicks, well, Knicks and Nets fan all my life, and never seen either team be good. So, and the most we've seen is second place and then choking the second round. And you know, they had their little run of three consistent years, and then the whole Phil Jackson era started, and everything fell apart. And yeah. it's still at Phil Jackson to this day. But yeah, so I mean, they they were winning though. Beat the Pistons last night uh, or the Sunday night. Then they played the, the Pacers. Tonight. Yep. So, maybe D Rose wasn't a bad addition. Oh hell no, bro! I was watching that Pistons game and Dennis McDonough, yeah. garbage dog. Like yo, I'm so we robbed them, robbed them clean for Derrick Rose. Yeah, and I, and I mean, I, I guess he 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 definitely is helping those kids uh, develop quickly and topping RJ yeah, quickly, and even yeah, RJ, RJ Barrett, bro. Yeah. I was gonna say you saw RJ Barrett drop like twenty something Sunday night consistently, so. yo. He had like three games of twenty. I'm in fantasy. I saw a stat in the month of February. He shot like forty seven percent from three. He's wow. He's slowly getting there, bro. Like John Morant in the month of February shot like twenty percent, and that's another person I have in fantasy, and that's that's been rough to watch a little bit. I do think him not having Jaron Jackson doesn't help the situation, but RJ Barrett is developing. Um, Julius Randle is out here looking crazy. Ethan would know. Ethan has him in fantasy. He can't lie. He can lie on many other things. He can't lie on that because that's really <laughs> helping to win games. Um, except me. I, be, I beat Ethan, but, you know, that's near no there. Um, <laughs> Ethan, what, what's your take on the Knicks, bro? Well, what do you think? I mean, obviously, let's be real. We're not going to win – a chip. We're not going to the final. We know that. We're just very surprised to see that we're 18 to 17 right now. So let me get your take on this. First things first, I'm happy to see New York back on the map. Happy to say it. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me clean this <laughs> up real quick. Hold on. Am I hearing that right? Say that again. New York, New York basketball is back. I'm not right. going to lie to you. The Knicks are looking good. Um, when it comes to playoffs, I don't see them going past the first round per se. Um, but right now in the regular season, I think you guys will make the playoffs no doubt. Now looking at it. Um, I should have talked about that real quick. I think it depends who we play, in my opinion. Because right now well, the Knicks are looking the way they look and they don't have Mitchell Robinson. It? And that's a big <laughs> part of their defense at center. And no one has been holding it down right now. Yeah. Chris, who, who do you think, who do you see the Knicks being able to blow by if we play them the first round? I think the Pacers, after seeing the way they played the Pacers a few times, I think we could beat the Pacers and keep moving on. I was going to say, if we fall high enough on the spectrum where we can get maybe even in front of the Bucks, because I don't think we're – I obviously don't think we're going to get in front of the Nets nor the 76ers. But if we could just creep by the Bucks or maybe stay at four and you end up playing people like the Raptors or maybe you – know, I think they can beat the Raptors. I think they can beat the Hornets. Definitely Wait, think they could beat the Hornets. Pull up these uh, I think they, you know, because that's where you're going to play if you end up at a three or a four. You're going to end up playing either the Hornets or maybe the Bulls if they can creep in. So, I don't know. I feel I'm like they could beat. That... Sorry. I feel, like, <clears throat> I feel like they can beat anybody from seven through ten right there. That Toronto through Chicago. 
because that's who's going to slip in and out. I'm iffy on Boston, iffy on Miami, but. Yeah. E, what's your How team? Do you... I was just going to say, I saw last week the Heat were like 10th and the Pacers were 5th. Like I mean, within Miami a week, that changed. is on a six-game winning streak and the Pacers on a four-game losing streak, so that definitely would help the situation right there. That's insane. Talk about Toronto too, man. Yeah, Toronto, they, they just flipped the switch and they got things rolling at the right time. And I told you guys the Hawks were going to fall out and the Hornets are now one of those teams too, like you guys called them, they're going to fall out. So, yeah. Just look, look, it's looking good in New York, bro. And, you know, let's talk about Oladipo a little bit because we brought that up. Um, Ethan, you brought it up before, so I'll let you bring it up again. So how do you decline 45 mil two years for the Rockets? Like, you have to be that bad of a team to decline that. I mean, bro, it's like the Rockets have lost 12 games. They have no direction right now but picks. He wanted to be either on the Knicks or Miami. That's been known. Apparently, there was a rumor. I don't know. Allegedly, this is what happened. After the Pacers and Heat series, after the Heat swept the Pacers, he went up to the Heat players after the game and said, yo, I need to come play with you. And everybody was like, yo, what? Like, you know, everybody jokes around. Yo, I need to play with you during the offseason, you know. You just got swept by these people, and you're going to tell them right after you got swept, y'all need to come play with y'all? Yo, he learned from KD, bro. Come on, son. True. Very true. So, personally, I don't want the Knicks to trade for him. I think that we could sign him in, the fr- in free agency in the offseason. I don't want to give up any pieces right now because every piece has been showing signs of life after Oprah Payton has yeah. sat out the last three games. Frank Nilekina came back. He's looking real good defensively. He had a big stop. In the Pacers game, we had that game-ending steal, hit the two free throws. He's 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 been yeah. showing willingness to score a little bit more. You know, like Frank Nilekina got the ball and looked mad timid. Now he's pulling up in people's faces without problems. I'm like, all right, I'm I'm liking it, bro. And I don't I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm just looking at the roster right now on uh, Basketball Reference, and bro, like literally, like our average experience age just has to be like three to four years. Bro, they're they're that's a young team, bro. It's a really really young team, and like that that's the scary thing about the Knicks right now. They're a young team, look, and look, you can see the salaries right here because they I think we're like the third lowest payroll. Yo, RJ Barrett eight mil, Iggy Brasdingas is in G League right now. Reggie Bullock four, Alec Burke six, Kevin Knox yeah. four, Nerlens Noel five, Nilakina six, Peyton is five. He's off the contracts this year. He might even get traded now. Manual quickly two mil. Julius Randle eighteen. He has the team option that you could sign him or you could extend him. Which I think they're going to take that team option to make sure this isn't a bluff, and then you know they'll go from that direction. Austin Rivers three mil team option for the next two years, and that's a tradable contract. Mitchell Robinson's on a mil. I think they re-signed him this year, but with his bird rights, it won't really hurt too much. Derrick Rose seven mil. That contract's done this year, so you can maybe re-sign him for the next two years, and Obi Toppin four mil. Like. And if they can get Derrick Rose on a veteran minimum or maybe a little more, yeah. Easy. Easy money. Steal. Especially because he loves Tibbs. Bro, he, if they tell him, yo, take, take a four mil contract to stay here because we need you to like we, – we want you here. Tibbs wants you. You want Tibbs. It, it's dangerous. And then you just add another piece. And there's a, a report by Brian Windhurst, the, the big dude that used to port the Cavs and kind of just derides LeBron very heavily. Um, he was talking about apparently this – there's rumors out there within the next year the Knicks should get a superstar or a star. That he, he said, I'm not going to say who. I'm not going to put anything out there like that. But just know there's somebody in the back pages to look for. So, we're looking good, bro. Ethan, what's, what's your take? How are you liking the Knicks, bro? Like I said, as an overall team, I really like it. You guys got to make moves, though, because looking at it, it's not a playoff pretending team to get, like, far – but now it's an attraction. Last year it was an attraction. Now it's like, okay, New York is back. Let me get a superstar. Let me have someone with Randall. Let me have someone with Mitch. And that would look really good, depending who you get. Yeah. Bro, it's I feel, like they need, I feel like they need a small forward, bro. Like, you need a superstar small forward, bro. And that team will be disgusting. Like, you get somebody you can just throw the ball to. I don't know. Like just the, uh, 
Oh, uh, somebody, somebody but like the, problem, I, the real problem like that. Like I do agree with you, Chris. We do need a small forward, but the 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 free agency class isn't that strong. It's small forward. It's like Demar Derozan, and I'm like, we have RJ Barrett. Yeah. That was the same player. Like I don't I don't want that right now. Yeah. I do I do feel you though. We do need a small forward. I just don't know where you look because Kawhi Leonard didn't come here. Let's be realistic. Like no. that's not happening and. Like there's not too many. Who options. else? And that's what I'm saying. Who else are you gonna? Who else are you gonna go for at that point? You're not gonna go out and go all in, send half the team for someone, you know, like a Kevin Durant or something like that to that extent. Yeah, especially because superstar talent. Bro, I was that's what I was. I hit you guys up yesterday about that about the bet. Yo, they had us projected to win 22 and a half games over under. Like the Knicks already won 18. Like Vegas is about to lose mad money on that bet, but. You know, like, that that's just a sign, bro. Like, we weren't supposed to be this good. They were projecting the Knicks to be maybe, like, the fourth worst team in the league and we're in fourth place in the East. And we're, like, the 13th best team in the league right now or before last night. So, we're in that range. So, we're looking good. It's it's, it's nice. It's, it's a nice time to be a New York Knicks fan. It's been, it's been a long ride. It's been a long wait. But, yo, it was worth it. That's a fact. Speaking of somebody else who's very loyal to his team, Ethan, you're um, – Ethan's a like, I'm fan. fucking tired. I'm tired of hearing about the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about the Thunder for Ethan a little bit. Ethan, um, how are you feeling about the Thunder, bro? You guys are playing the Mavericks tomorrow. I'm actually very excited to see what you guys do because screw the Mavs. <laughs> how are you um, feeling about this? Playing against Luka does not sound exciting at all. Um, but I'm excited how uh, Shaw plays against him. I can see that matchup being actually entertaining. Um, as a team overall, Chris said, 29 draft picks. <laughs> All we're looking forward to. <laughs> um, a month before the deadline, or 25 days. Um, honestly, we've been winning games. I'm really surprised we won. Like, we beat the Spurs the other day in the buzzer beater. Really surprised. Yeah, you guys are fourteen and twenty. I mean, everybody was not expecting you guys to even be close to fourteen wins this year. You know, honestly, if I'm gonna keep it a stack with you, I agree. Can, we, can, we, can we look at that roster real quick? I'd be forgetting yeah. who plays on the on OKC. To be honest, Shy Gilgeous, Al Horford. I know them, yeah, but I'm talking about like deep players. I feel like they got Trevor Ariza. I ain't even know Trevor Ariza played for them. There he is. Okay. He's been a pretty good, solid young in for you. How's George Hill been this year? Complaining. <laughs> he denied heard, those COVID protocols. <laughs> I heard that you guys um might trade him. What, what's what's that looking like? Uh, honestly, if we're able to trade anybody but Shaw, I would be happy. Because why are we paying Al Horford for 27 mil right now? I did not know that. <laughs> he wasn't complaining when you got that pick, though, with him. Uh, he's, he, he's been nice. I'm not going to lie. He's been at least a, a solid um 15 and 10. But 27 mil, that's a lot. That's too much. I blame the Sixers for that one. But yeah. I'm willing to trade anybody. Anybody. Anybody but shot. So you don't want to keep Dort. You don't want to keep Diallo. Dort, Dort's pretty good for you guys. Come on, bro. You can't. You want to do him like that? Yeah. Everybody getting the boot but shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the, the Thunder – I hope you guys beat the Mavericks because, you know, you, they got the cancer of Chris Tosport Let's get into that a little bit. I know Chris has definitely heard about this over the weekend. Rumor has it the Mavs are looking to trade him. I, I broke the news about that a few days ago. But the real thing that got me really um, excited about that story was that they talked about how apparently Porzingis' brother, who's his agent, allegedly, is um, a cancer. And he's the reason why the team and Porzingis are kind of – on this little standstill because, you know, there's some things going on within the organization. Now, Ethan, hopefully you guys beat them and things keep getting worse. I want them to trade Porzingis and they better get damn way more than we got for Porzingis because that was a big story. And you, you know how that went for us. I mean, four seed, so <laughs> pretty damn well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yo, y'all didn't get KD, yo. Y'all didn't get Kyrie at the free no cast. We got Julius Randle. We got the franchise now. We got a franchise player. He's mad young. We got pieces around him, and we still got mad cap space. 
And we got a manual quickly out of that because we signed Marcus Morris and traded him. We got Derrick Rose out of that by trading Dennis Lee Jr.'s bum ass for Derrick Rose. We got two first-round picks from them, and we still got to see what happens with that first-round pick because the standings are very close in the West. And I know the Thunder and Pelicans, Memphis, and Dallas are all separated by, like, four games right now. So that's something to keep an eye on. But we'll see what happens there. Um, hopefully you guys can beat them tomorrow, and hopefully the Knicks can get this dub against the Spurs. Let's hope. <laughs> Speaking of Dallas, let's let's transition now to the NFL. Everybody knows going into this year, a big thing was Dak Prescott, especially after his ankle injury. A lot of people were like, are they going to sign him? Are they not? What's going to happen? Are they going to franchise tag him? Everybody here said give him his money after what happened to him, especially because the team looked utterly garbage. Um, I guess homie thought because of that, that gives him green light to ask for like 40 mil a year. Um, apparently he wants close to Dak, not Dak Prescott. Well, Dak Prescott was close to Patrick Mahomes' money. Yeah. No. Just no. No. I'm, I, I fucking hate the Cowboys, but, like, no. Like, you, even when you were healthy, you weren't that good, bud. So, no. <laughs> Get over yourself. So. Uh, like, who's telling him this thing? Like, who's, who's sitting? Uh, like, I, I want to know if an agent is really sitting there with him and say, yeah, say that. Like, that, that's good to go public with. Go ahead. Uh, no. Nah. I'm trying to see if I can get a quote from him. How much Bro. How much do you think? How much you giving Dak Prescott? Who? Uh, I'm not even sure. Like, you're coming off an a injury. We don't know where we stand with you in the future. Like, there's a bunch of QBs out there we can get. I was literally just going to say that. There's literally an array of quarterbacks out there that, you know, I don't know. I feel like he's more close to maybe uh, – no, nah, not even. Who are you going to say, Russell Wilson? Nah, I was going to say Deshaun Watson money, but he's not worth – I don't know, 20 mil. Deshaun 20 Watson th- way more worth that because – you know, he he had the ACL, but after that, he's shown no injury. To yeah, and that that's what that's what I was gonna say. He's earning his thirty-two mil a year, but he's shown that he's come back from that injury and he's worth that thirty-two mil, which still isn't forty million like Patty Mahomes. But you know, like if you're gonna put Doc below him, you got to give him twenty-five, twenty. Yeah, I think I was, I was gonna say twenty a year, maybe twenty-five max. Or yeah, at most twenty-seven, maybe. At most, and that's stretching it. I wouldn't even give him 27, dog. Sorry. Either you did that 20, 25 number good in that range? Yeah, that's a good number. I mean, in my opinion, I want to go over 27 either. That that 20 range sounds perfect. Um, and we're talking about the Cowboys here, so you know how you know how they get down with their their management. So we'll see <laughs> Mr. what happens. Jerry, Mr. Jerry Jones going to come in at 17 mil talking about you don't want to play for us now, buddy. That's fine. Just walk the fuck away. <laughs> walk away. Like, we're going to bring back with Andy Dalton. He'll take five mil. We'll be all right. <laughs> we'll be all right. <laughs> um, so. Another big signing, J.J. Watt. Yo. J.J. Watt is now a Cardinal. How do you guys feel about this? you guys think this That's... solidifies anything? Does it change anything? Let me get you guys. line about to be nasty. Him and Chris Jones. I don't know. I think they might be a, a good team with him on there, but I don't know. How do you guys feel about J.J. Watt as of recent? Yeah, I'll let you go because I know me and you are probably going to say the same thing. Yeah, he hasn't been the star that he's just supposed to be that he was before when he first started. Um, he's still, of course, J.J. Watt. Um, but I, I don't see him having that, like, top five defense outlook for the cards. Yeah, I'm going to add on to that. Um, the reason they're not going to get that top five is because he's probably going to play, like, max 10 games. Like, J.J. Watt's yeah. injury history has been insane the last few years. And, you know, like you said, Chris, him next to Chandler Jones, nice. When he's not next to Chandler Jones, like, he ain't going to be on the field anyway. So, it's like, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't see – and they gave him a lot of money. When I saw how much he got, I said, yo – yeah. Why is he getting that much? He hasn't That's been true. playing for the last like three years. What are they doing? I mean, but, it's what are you saying? 
I was going to say, I feel like it's more the presence of him, like, team-wise, like, that team leader that they need, that captain that they need, because they don't really have the guy like that on defense. They got Buda Baker. Like I said, they don't got a guy like that on defense. <laughs> <laughs> Chandler Jones? Chandler Jones and Buda Baker ain't enough for you? I, I, feel, I, feel like Chandler, like, I, I feel like Chandler Jones is not a team captain, bro. I don't know. Like, I feel like you, you need a guy like J.J. Watt to solidify you and bring your defense together, even if he's just talking and even if he's just going out there and having a sack a game or, you know, a half a sack a game, whatever it is. Because definitely his production isn't there. So, uh, is he worth that much money? Probably not. But You want to you wanna say what you were about to say real quick? Yeah. I think the, the league was happy to say they didn't go to Steelers or the Browns. Because that Miles Garrett and TJ Watt would have been disgusting. Yeah, either one of those he goes to and it's a wrap, bro. Uh, but hey, and that that I was just gonna say that could be the reason why they probably paid him so much. Like the Steelers probably offered him something, and but I heard he was gonna get more from one of those teams, and he chose the Cardinals. I was like, oh, yeah, as long as it wasn't the Bills, I don't give a hell. I don't know what D Hop said to him, but he must have been convincing as hell. <laughs> yeah. He probably said, yo, in Arizona, they got some crazy weed, yo. Pull up. <laughs> <laughs> but, yo, we're going to leave it there. Less than a minute. We'll be back on Friday with another podcast. And we'll have Reselling 101 Ooh. where we could talk about, you know, the releases, what we got, what's coming out, and talk All about the All-Star weekend. Hell, Ooh. yeah. We're going to break that Oof. down on Friday. <laughs> so, until Exciting. then, guys, peace. Peace.